Hey, it's Flex. You're watching Build Series Sydney. I'm here with Dean Lewis. Today we're chatting about his album, A Place We Knew. Give it up for Dean Lewis. Thank Dean you. Thank great. you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Now, Dean, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Oh, okay. Are you interviewing me? This is great. <laughs> I'm feeling Start good. About. I'm feeling good. Great. I want to say, though, you've been looking a little bit busy. Am I yeah. right? Am I reading yes. that right? Yes. What is it? A tour that we're on? Yeah. Um, <laughs> basically, like, it's touring till March next year and we've been... Like I was just in Europe and America and then we got home and then I do an Australian tour and then we just do it all again. It's basically just non-stop, which is great. You make it sound so easy and so fun. It is fun, yeah. So you've got Brisbane next. Brisbane next. And then Perth. Then Perth and then then we go to like Asia and then Melbourne and then we go to Asia to do stuff and then we go to back to Europe. So, yeah. But it's, it's great. It's like, it's like an alternate reality. Do you know Ooh. what I mean? Because you're on this bus traveling around with your friends basically and – it's kind of they're sort of they're my friends, but sort of you, you're paying everyone, <laughs> so it's kind of uh -huh. like everyone laughs at your jokes a bit more. You know yeah, right? okay, great. And uh, <laughs> so I'm a bit funnier, and and then you're like things are just taken care of. It's like I, I almost don't want to come home when I'm away because I'm like, it's it's just really cool. What's fun. taken care of? What's an, what what gets taken care of in an average day for well, you? Well, just like things like um, we you, you get off the bus and there's like catering. I mean, mm. there has been at some venues when we play small ones, no, but like we're getting to that point now where there's like you, they make breakfast and like. Um, just people kind of saying we can get you here or there or which you kind of need because mm. there's so many things you have to do. So these people um, like my tour manager they take a lot of the pressure off by doing some of the smaller things so I can focus on doing mm. what I have to do well. Yeah. Great. I love that. So yeah. if we can organise that for me, that would be yeah. super awesome. But until then, I'm happy living vicariously through yeah, you. Yeah, it's just crazy expensive. It's, it's insane. Yeah. I, I, that's why I just don't like to look at how much it all costs. I'm just like, it's all Because it's your expense as well, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. It's, we've come full circle with that. 100%. 100%. <laughs> now, for those of us who haven't yet seen you on tour, what can we expect? I'm talking vision, creative direction. Yeah. Um, well, I used to play just the guitar and piano myself and like swap back and forth yeah. maybe two years ago. But now it's like full band like the songs sound like how they sound on the recording, you know, because mm. I tried to, um, when I first started, I wanted to, I like being the piano guy. And then very early on, I was like, maybe after all these waves, I was like, I don't want to, you know, I started playing the songs on piano and stuff. Mm. And I was like, there's so many people out there with amazing voices and there's always going to be someone better. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to do the songs bigger and like build up, make them more epic. And it's more fun to play that way. Yeah. So um, now the tours and the shows are like basically how they sound in the recording, um, which is like full band, a lot of energy and uh, all that stuff. And what actually happens on tour? I know it's performing for a few hours. It's yeah. like driving back and forth, maybe a plane. Yeah. But aside from that, what's going on day to day? Um, to be honest, not much apart from promo. Oh. So we'll get, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll finish the show. And usually I do three shows in a row because last year I was doing more than that and I kept losing my voice. Mm. And uh, so we have like like hard three days and I have to you have to take a day off because you physically can't do it. And um, or like a day off singing. I can still do promo and stuff. And uh, so you go to sleep, you have like your own bunk. Mm. And it's like they're really nice buses. Like it's like cool. And uh, you wake up in a new town and then you know, I'll usually go and do some radio stuff and then hang out, maybe go for a run then do the show. It's like it's kind of cool. Okay, so we need more time for leisure then. That's what yeah, I'm hearing. Yeah, there's not much leisure time. There's not much leisure time at all. Yeah. yeah. And so you've done Australia. You've done. You're going to do Asia. Yeah. You've done. You're going to do the US and Canada. Yes. What's your favorite location? I Maybe love even Los city. Angeles. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I Why? love it. Because it's as close as you can be to like all the cool, exciting. Like it just it feels like you're as close to the entertainment industry as you can be, and the, there's so much history, and everyone's doing something really cool. Even if the people are a little bit weird, mm. do you know what I mean? Because everyone's <laughs> like trying to be famous and I find yeah. that really weird. But yeah. I like that in America, everyone will encourage each other to do well. Um, even if it's a little bit fake. Like I think that'll push you into either being – realising your potential or into like a delusion, which Ooh. happens, you know, if people tell you you're great when you're not. You get that as well. Um, Can you tell the difference between when someone's being really genuine or when someone's I think like so. I think so. Yeah. Um, things are good, so I hope people are being honest. And, yeah, I, I haven't had a lot of the the bullshit, <laughs> but I can say that. <laughs> there um, it is. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, but people definitely – I think people definitely would blow smoke if, like, if you wanted that. You could go over there and people would tell you you're amazing if you're not. Who do you hang out with when you're in L.A.? I don't know. I don't have any cool friends. No? No, no. Yeah. I just literally stay in – like, I don't really – when I'm like, if I have a couple of days off, I will literally just do my own thing. I don't like, I don't need to go out and hang with everyone. I, the only cool thing I ever did was I had a, in Los Angeles, I had a dinner with James Bay. That was the coolest thing I've ever done. There's a that's name That's the drop. only name we drop. Like that. That's all I've got. I like it. That's I all like I've it. got. It's fresh. Yeah. 
interesting. Yeah. And have you seen any famous people? Like, have you been? Uh, I saw Arnold Schwarzenegger's there son. There we go. Walking out of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Walking out of this juice shop. And uh, he had a juice and he was with this like bunch of like really good looking people. And they just like were rolling around living the dream. And I was like, oh, that's him. And that's about it. The only guy, I met Van McCann from Catfish and the Bottle Man. I saw him at the airport. There you before, go. I think I'd released Waves and I went up to him and I was like, hey man, I'm a massive fan. And I remember my heart was racing oh. because I'm such a fan. And it, I was like, this is really weird. I've never had that before being nervous around another guy as well. I was like, <laughs> but I idolized this guy. I was like, you're amazing. And so, but now I know how fans feel when right. they say hi to mm-hmm. me sometimes, so which, is, which is cool. Does that mean that you now identify as a famous person? Have you settled no, into that title? I'm so not like, no, I can go anywhere. No one recognizes me. Like yeah. once a week. Sometimes people look at me like that and I'm like, oh, is like my hair weird or something like that? Mm. You know, I, don't, I never know if they're looking at me because they know who I am. But it's maybe, <laughs> it's very rare. I think I've slipped into this like people know my songs. Mm. Um, not like celebrity thing yet. And I'm not really interested in that to be honest mm. either. But you are good to your fans. I've noticed there's like this orange heart thing that's happening <laughs> on Instagram. Yeah. For those of you who might not know, Dean is diligent at replying <laughs> to pretty much every comment with an orange heart. I don't know how you do yeah. it. I, I, it's, it's getting out of control on Instagram now. Yeah. So why the orange heart to begin with? It could have been red <laughs> or yellow, blue or purple, yeah. maybe yeah. even green. Well, the emoticon library thing only has like five and like red's generic. Okay. And um, the reason was they – see the Dean Lewis, they – we were looking for like a, a font and I was like, I had that font and we were trying to find a color mm. and they sent that color through and I was like, I haven't seen anyone use that color and I really like it. So then I was just like, well, I want to have some sort of brand like association, like color with, I just thought it was cool and I was like orange works and then I just became the orange heart club and now that's just a thing. It's is, really lovely though. Oh yeah. Cool. Thanks. Logistically. How are we getting through replying orange hearts to everyone? Are you taking oh. out five to six hours a day? No, I, I do a thing now where I, have t- I, I, I open it up and I'm like 20. 20 replies. So nice. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 40. And, uh, but I, it's, it's getting out of control. I can't do the reply to them all now. Mm. But the first like couple of hundred I usually get to. It sounds banal, but why do you do it? Um, well, I was just really blown away that, okay, it was two years ago. Waves was out. And I was like, I have like 10,000 followers. And I was like. I'm getting three comments. I can reply to three people. Yeah. Like, why am I not replying? Because it's cool not to reply. Mm. I remember that. Like, no, I just reply. You don't reply, man. Yeah. Like, it's cool. And then I was like, but why though? And then I was like, well, how cool if I just replied? And then 10 people started commenting. And then it was like 100. And then like 1,000. Yeah. And uh, and it was just like a natural thing. of like, I've got time to do it. Why not? And now I don't really have the time to do it. But I just like to do it. But you make time. I make some time, yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah. Let's talk about a place we knew. Yes. Album. Huge. Not yeah. chill. I want I want you to brag about it for a little bit. Oh yeah, it's huge. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah. Well, come on, give me something more. I said huge, so you need to counter it with a bigger uh, giga- uh do I need to counter it with something negative? No, something bigger than huge. Uh, gigantic. That'll do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> talk to me about the process of building that album. Surely it's how many tracks is it? Twelve or Twelve so? songs, yeah. How many did you make before you oh. got to the twelve oh. final? I mean, the album could have been, I mean, how many did I make over the years? Like, I mean, I look at it and go like probably five years of like, of of songs. Because the oldest song on there, is, it's a song called For The Last Time and that was five years old. Um, but from that point, when I first wrote that song, I was like, okay, this is a song I'm proud of and it doesn't suck. Like, and that's, you need that first one, right? Is that the metric? It just has to not suck. It has to not suck. Great. Yeah. And then you go, I can do this as a career. <laughs> it's like as good as someone's song you'd listen to who you're a fan of. Mm. I remember playing it to my mum and dad and all my brothers and they, were, and they were like, oh, that's good. That's a good song. It wasn't a, it's not like a hit, but mm. it's a good tune. But then after that, I reckon ideas. In my previous iPhone, I had like 6,500 uh, like memos and I broke it um, and that's sitting at my parents' house. I have to fix that. But I've got a new one that's only got like 500. But actually proper ideas, I'd say probably, probably like actual – potential songs maybe a hundred songs that were like good enough to be to finish you know what I mean so about almost seven thousand ideas six thousand maybe Mm. and then of those ideas a hundred of them you started making and then now you got to a final 12 yeah and I had about for the album there's probably like 20 songs that were like which ones do you want to go with um and different versions of songs like to be honest if waves didn't do so well another version of be alright would have come out 
that would have been not half as it was half as good. And it's it's weird. Like the songs kind of kept giving me more time to to, perf- to perfect things and we rework the songs. Mm. So a lot of the songs in the album, I'd like recorded three or four times. And I think that's one thing that. I do that not a lot of people do and I'm lucky because I have a record label that has the money to spend to do it because if you're independent, it's hard to like spend $5,000 to record a song yeah. and then do it again. Although I did that a bit when I first started. Um, but yeah, I, I always say like to people who are starting, I'm like, if you record something and it doesn't sound as good as your idol's song, whoever that is, it can be anyone. Mm. Like if you if you play, I remember playing like, you know, like if you play any, like a James Bay song, let's just say him randomly. Um, if you play his song on acoustic guitar and I play a song that I've written on acoustic guitar and they sound comparable, why does my recording sound half as good as that? Like, mm. and most people go, well, I, I recorded it. It's like, well, no, you can do it again. Wow. You know, so that's, that's, I've always had that mindset of like, it can be better. It can be better and redoing things. I guess it takes humility to do that as well. A lot of times people are working with ego. I don't want to record it again. It sounds great. I did yeah, it once, whatever. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned that about if your song doesn't sound as good as maybe one of your idols' songs, then you could re-record it. Who are your idols? Yeah. Um, well, songwriting-wise, uh, there's two guys, Noel Gallagher and Bruce mm-hmm. Springsteen, nice. 100%, like massively obsessed with those guys. Um, there's a Bruce Springsteen really inspired me. I heard that song Dancing in the Dark a lot growing up, like it's like a classic. But I didn't really listen to it till about maybe four or five years ago. And there's a line in that the whole song's incredible because he puts you in the driver's seat of uh, and he makes you see what he's singing about. And there's a line in the second verse, which is uh, messages keep getting clearer, radios on and I'm moving around the place. I check my look in the mirror. I want to change my clothes, my hair, my face. And I was like, when I read that, like I Googled it and I was like, that blew my mind because He's like literally just saying he's walking around his room feeling anxious. And I sort of use that in all my songs, like be all right. I look up from the ground to see your sad and teary eyes. Like I'm just singing the same, describing a scene or like there's a song called Hold of Me. I'm like walking slowly, trying to find a place to go. Lose my mind. I like, um, I see you walking through the rain. Um, so I use those techniques in all my songs because not as like a methodical thing of like, like that's how you do it, but just, they make me feel something. Mm. So I like to do it like that and it paints a picture. So Bruce Springsteen and Noel Gall- Gallagher's melodies from like Oasis, I'd watch like him playing, you know, like Wonderwall acoustically or like some might say acoustically, like all these huge songs and they were so simple. Mm. And I'm like, if he can do five albums of that, I can like write one song as good as his worst song. Do you know what I mean? That, that made it feel yeah, possible. Yeah, Absolutely. That's a good way to look at it. Now I'm rethinking all the things I stopped doing because I was like, oh. Mm, <laughs> yeah, because you can look at it and be scared of it, right? Exactly. Like, how are you so good? Yeah. But it's like glass half full, not half empty. Totally, totally. Okay, now I'm philosophers. half Philosophers. Now I'm not. No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But you mentioned Noel Gallagher um, yeah. as a songwriting and melodic influence. But what yeah. about your intonation? Because you sound Australian, but it does sound a little bit English sometimes. Yeah, or is yeah. that just me? No, totally. Um, definitely. I mean, like, I grew up listening to Oasis and the Verve. You know what I mean? And English music was huge in my house. And I spent a bit of time, like when I recorded Waves, I was in England Mm. and I was there for months. And every, I think also like I pick up a a couple of accents. And to be honest, sometimes singing it in a little bit of an English accent makes it sound a bit nicer. You know what I mean? Like uh, trying to think of like a word. Could you give me an example of where you'd sing it in an Australian accent and would sound a bit harsh versus an English accent that sounds a bit soft? Well, I mean, I guess Be Alright sounds a little bit English. Like... I look up from the ground to see you. Be like Australian. Be like I look up from the ground to see you. You know, what I mean? it's like a bit. I mean, that's a little bit more brutal. You gotta give us some more. Give us some more. Like uh, I, I, I caught it, but then yeah. I lost it. But it's not the fact that you kissed him yesterday. You know, it's not as nice. <laughs> yeah, not as nice. It's doing something to it's me. Doing something. <laughs> it's like it's feeling low. Making you feel a bit sick. It's Is that <laughs> you're <gonna> say? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bit of reflux. It's yeah, coming yeah. up. Uh, no, that's incredible though. Um, do you think that that nuance was clear to you as you were writing or just in retrospect? I didn't even think of it. You know mm. what I mean? Like I was just like recording it and I mean, that song was so hard to get right. That as an example, like it, I just was, I was trying to get the emotion right in that song specifically. Like um, we did this demo of it four years ago and we had everyone telling me that's the song you have to release. Mm. Like um, I should have loaded it up to show you a snippet of it. <laughs> Do you want to, it might I take mean, me a second. Well, let's yeah. bring it up. I'm oh, ready for this. Little, yeah, uh, we've got a second or two. Do you like the way you sound on record when you hear it back? Yeah, well, I, like when you first start out, um, it's a big thing. You're always like, do I even sound – does my voice sound good mm. on um, 
on things. Like, let me type in be all right and see if this comes up. But this then you get to a point stuff. where you're like, <laughs> it's not about the voice anymore. Like, I know how rude does this seem? Like, while I'm doing this, I'm like talking. I don't like it though. I feel like we're friends. Yeah, it's like, like I don't this even is care. us over dinner. <laughs> like, just just pull it up. I'll yeah, be yeah, waiting. Yeah, yeah. I feel so rude. <laughs> no, you've, you've got to do it. At um, this point, we're really excited. But while I was learning, yeah, like I think when you first start out, you think your voice, you're like, is my voice good? Um, and all those insecurities run through your mind and you're trying to sound like someone else maybe as well when you first start out. Oh, I found it. Ah! Okay. So this is, do you want to hear it? Do you want to yeah, put it up to Absolutely. Here? All right. So this is like the very first recording four years ago. And uh, a little bit of background, it, was a lower mm. key and the chorus never felt like a chorus mm. to me. It just felt really flat. Mm. And um, yeah, and I just kept working on it and eventually I took it up a key and it sounded a lot more emotional. And um, so I decided to go with that one. But a lot of people wanted me to release this version. Ooh. And I was like, they were like, this is the version, man. And, and you like, were like, I'm going to stop you there. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to pitch it up. 100%. <laughs> so this is, uh, if it works, please work. Please work. Look up from the ground to see your sad and teary eyes You look away from me I see there's something you try to hide And I, I reach for your hand But it's cold, you pull away again And I wonder what's on your mind And then you say to me You made a dumb mistake You start to tremble And your voice begins to break You say the cigarettes on the counter Once your friends, they were my mates And I feel the colour You said it, I didn't get it <laughs> See, it sounds a bit, oh. sounds a bit, uh, I was getting into it. Getting into it. Yeah, I was Maybe I should have released that version then. I There's, knew still I was There's still time. There's still time. There's still time. Yeah, yeah. So, so has anyone else seen that? Because I'm really. feeling really special. Yeah, no, I haven't really shown that to anyone really. Okay, so. I'm trying to think of when you made Be Alright, you're like, this could be a hit. Did you give it to someone? Were you like, I'm going to send it to that person and, you know, they're going to make me a star? Yeah, no, like, I knew it was special because I'd show people and they were like, oh, that's a good song. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I was trying to get signed. Like, I'd show record labels and no one, they were like, oh, yeah, that's cool, but this other song is, like, really good. And uh, they were like, that's a good idea, but this one's good. And then... I was showcasing for the last record label in Australia, basically. Like everyone else I'd showcase for it and said no. And Mike Taylor from Universal comes in and I and I play him that song on piano and he's like, he's like, whoa. He goes, I'm gonna sign you. And he's like, and he saw me on the spot on that with that song. So but that was kinda like no one else was really interested. But that just goes to show of like keep 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 recording and trying new things to get it to the point you know it can be. Mm. It's hard to have that level of persistence, though, because yeah. I guess the rest of us aren't going to be the Dean Lewis after we try. Or we yeah, could yeah. be. Yeah, you could be. <laughs> yeah, it's, you got to be confrontational, I guess. Yeah. You know, or like not be scared to say no. Yeah. And I think if you're if you're like seventeen, you get a record deal, mm. and then like everyone's telling you what to do, you're going to think everyone knows what to do. Yeah. And and people do. Like I have an incredible label. Incredible. They're unbelievable. And that would if some of the people on the team weren't there, I would not be in this in this position. 100%. Mm. But um, you also have to know what you are as an artist and you have to say, no, that's not me. That might sound like a hit song, but that's not me. I don't like it, yeah. which is tough to do. But I've always been sort of stubborn to my maybe own detriment. Even with choosing songs on my album, yeah, I was like, you know, my family was like, that's your best song you've written. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not right. I don't want to put wow. it on, you know. This is another one. But um, <coughs> yeah, I think you got to be, you got to be, you got to have, you got to know what you want or people will tell you what you want. It's the power of no as well. Just saying yeah. no, it's not right. And then dealing yeah. with the consequence or reaping the benefits. Totally, that, totally. Because then you, fa you fail on your own. I'd rather you fail on your own yes. terms. How much would you resent someone if Oof. you like, if you went like, okay, we'll go with that song that you hated and then it didn't do well. Mm. You'd, I'd just, I'd freak out. It's like my hell for me. It's my like feelings my are already hurt. It hasn't even happened yeah, to me yeah, yet. Exactly, yeah. And with Be All Right, when I listen to it, I'm like, surely that, can't happen to one person. I mean, you found the cigarettes and then your friend said and yeah, you, know, yeah, you yeah. love her and it's over. And it's like, okay, like it, at this point, like it's is ridiculous. this fiction? Is this like nonfiction? Did it happen to you? Did it happen yeah. to a friend? Is there like a story for that? Yeah, it's it's like a combination of things that happened to me and some crazy stories that friends and family had told me over the years. Like the cigarette thing on the counter was like a thing that a, a story a friend told me ages ago. And so I just kind of combined those things and put put them into a song. But the chorus I sing about my older brother Reese, mm -hmm. um, 
he said to me when I when I saw this message pop up on an ex-girlfriend's phone, he said to me, um, you like put put your phone away, like don't call that. He was just like, have a drink. This is like six years ago. And he's like, um, we had like a drink and he was like, it'll like give it some time, you'll be fine. And so that was the kind of chorus that I put into the song. But it is a combination of all these different kind of stories and stuff. Is that how you write most of your music? Yeah, like it usually starts with something real. Mm. Like there's a song called Seven Minutes, which is like based on like the crux of it is real, which is I had an argument with this girl I was seeing in London like two and a half years ago when, around the time Waves came out. And then I got an Uber and I was like, I should turn around. And the chorus lines came in my head like, is it too late to turn around? I'm already halfway out of town. Mm. And I went home. Instead of going back, I went home and wrote the song. I've got an idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which has worked out really well because like I have the song and she's no longer with a guy who would go home and write a song about it. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. it's like we're all we're win, win, win. So I've got a ton of Q and A questions for you. Yeah. So, uh, oh, I mean, they're all coming from the audience. So if you want to look anyone in the eye, there's some room for that as well. Yeah. Let's do uh, it. Alicia wants to know what's your relationship status? Two pronged. And <laughs> have you ever been hit on by someone famous? Um, oh yeah, I'm, um, I was in a relationship for a year and a half, but I'm yeah single now, and no one famous has hit on me. It's no. you, Alicia. Yeah. Is it Alicia? Are you sure? <laughs> Could you tell if somebody was hitting on you? Like, are you really sure know. it hasn't happened? I'm not like, I, th- I don't know. I never know. I mm. never really know. So, but I don't think so. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone famous has hit on me. Um, look, that can be your truth. But the <laughs> truth that I will tell is that I know a ton of people have. Really? No, but I'm just going <laughs> to. Oh, right, right. I was like, who? <laughs> Give me names. I'm sure somebody has, like indirectly, Probably, like, indirectly. But I always think in Australia, like no one's really that fame we're like you know what i mean like no one's really that famous here <laughs> but i'm trying to think like I, I don't really know to be honest i don't sadly can't remember anyone well i guess this is the call out for anyone who might see you in la next time because yeah, you're yeah, feeling yeah. happy and friendly there just yeah, yeah. come on over just say hello shoot your shot come up and say hi yeah could be whatever Good question, we've think. got uh, a question from Gemma. she says how much pressure do you feel in this industry to look and act a certain way yeah i mean i thank you that's a really good question um I like. I guess it goes back to like the being cool thing. Mm. Like I'm just being myself. I'm always very myself. Like I don't fight against what people think I should be, but I'm just always myself. I can't help it. Mm. Um, the look thing is also it's quite weird. Like I did not think it's normal to see so many photos of myself all the time. Like um, you know, you get photos with fans and they tag you in it. It's just, it's very. I, I'm never one to like. I, I don't like love myself like i'm not like i'm not like i don't hate myself i'm cool with myself but i'm not like always wanting to see myself everywhere yeah and it's really weird when like you're always seeing photos yourself i'm like oh god i don't want to like you know Mm. but it's uh but no i don't really feel that much pressure like i like staying healthy because i like to feel good in in my head so like Mm. but not for any reason for anyone really like just for myself really Mm. yeah so would you cut your hair never (laughs) (laughs) without without without, okay this looks okay with with short hair, it's just you just don't want to know about it. Wouldn't even recognize you. you no, you no. You'd recognize me, then you just walk away. That was the old day. You just feel, I'm off you, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring him, bring him back. You'd say. We'll just him. do a role play later on. Just yeah, get yeah, yeah. Tie it up. <laughs> yeah, we've got it. This is a really good one. It's from Holly, and she wants to know how do you make the transition from a Channel Nine soundie to a musician? Yeah. Um, wow, that's tough. It was. Just, I, I would say obsession. Obsession Ooh. with um, songs like. It was, a, it was luck with my friend passing stuff on because I don't think it would have happened because I needed the opportunity of those people to open doors to then also have back myself more mm. because I had all these people around me saying, that's awesome. So I was like, okay, well, then I'll keep going. And then you suck for a bit more and then you come up with waves. Do you know what I mean? And then you release that and then your life changes. So it was just, I think, obsession and just a natural progression of luck and things happening and and really looking into songs, like looking into why they're good and figuring out what you like. So the key element is that you need to suck a little bit or a lot to get <laughs> to the good place. Yeah. Suck again yeah. and then get to the better place yeah. and then you make waves. Totally. Yeah, exactly. That's a really good <laughs> way to put it. <laughs> you, but right. Yeah, you've got to suck and you do. You, you really do. Like the songs I used to write when I was like first starting out were not great. Like they're just random words, you right. know what I mean? And then now I am go like – the, the ideas that I come up with now are like a lot better than that just at, at the start because I have a good idea of what I want, what's better now for me. That's mm. the word, sorry, yeah. 
that makes any sense. It makes a lot of sense. You're very good at articulating. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Uh, really quickly, another Q&A question before we jump back into my things here. Yeah. You performed on Ellen. Yeah, yeah. How was it? <laughs> like, Yeah, it was epic. It was... um. It was really intense. Like I've seen a few of those little studio. I've done a couple of live performances mm-hmm. now and they're always like really small like studios where on TV they look big. And then yeah. – but Ellen was this massive lot on the Paramount set in Los Angeles. It was huge and the backstage was huge. I didn't meet Ellen. I, on camera I met her but I didn't meet her before. But it was really weird. Like they kind of – you did your set up. You were there all day and then they're kind of like, okay, you're ready to go. And then I just put my ears in ears in to hear myself and as I put them in I literally just heard her say and this is Dean Lewis and then the curtains just opened and then my heart was I haven't when I first started doing open mic nights like three years ago my you know like when you first start doing this your hands shake naturally because you're playing in front of people and it's really freaky you know what I mean Mm. you're like oh god of course but I haven't had I had that a little bit at the start but then now I'm like confident on stage I'm like you know you can play you know you can do it but I had the same kind of raised heart rate and I was like that I think that if I had been given that opportunity two years ago, I don't think I would have got through it because it was like one of those things that you yeah. get through it by like autopiloting the last 150 gigs you've done. You yeah. know what I mean? But it was an incredible experience and uh, a real rush and uh, cool, really cool. And what is she like? You know what? Like I only met her on – and it sounds like I'm just saying this because it's like a cool story. But yeah. like <laughs> she – like there was this big room. They're all dancing and stuff. You know, all the crowd. They're all cheering. And then she came over and – she, she's that's one of those things when she looks at you and I don't know if it's because of who she is but she almost makes you feel like you're the only person in the room and I've only had that once or twice before yeah. but she has a very very strong whatever she has it's very special you know what I mean and uh yeah but that that's that's my experience with Ellen I want that you want, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, like I want some of that <laughs> yeah yeah you can you know what yeah she's great Wow. Make it happen. Okay. Well Dean Lewis said Ellen's great and now we know Ellen's great didn't she's know great. before but you said so we have to wrap up soon, but yeah. I want to ask something of you. Yeah. I said I was only going to ask for two or three things. This might be the second or third one. Pre-show rituals. Yeah, pre-show rituals, yeah. I heard that you may have a shot of Jamison. Not anymore. Oh. Yeah, I did. I, I don't drink much, but I was like mm. doing this thing where I'd have like, you know, a little bit of a, before you get on stage, like a bit of a buzz. Tipple? Yeah, a little tipple. <laughs> but then my, my band, like Benno, my guitarist, like he just stopped. He was like, I, he, don't, he didn't have a problem, but he'd like have a beer every now and then. He was like, I'm just going to stop drinking. Like, completely just because like he was like i want to feel good mm. and then i was like okay well i'm not gonna have my little whiskey shot before a show and i was losing my voice a bit uh. as well and i wondered if it was like a little bit you have it and you sing a bit harder or something and mm. so i haven't been drinking at all and so my pre-show ritual now is a lot more relaxed i used to do a lot of power posing in the mirror like you know that ted talk that girl did where she does the power posing and apparently it's supposed to you're supposed to like look at yourself in the mirror and put your arms up, and it's supposed to activate some sort of. You've got to show us because I'm like, is it the one hand? Yeah, you know, you, spo- you, you um, camera see me. You just basically okay. like that. Both arms. Right. Both arms up, and you just like stare at yourself. All right. Like do you want to hold that just for a quick ten? A quick ten. Do you want to do it with ten. me? Oh, well, yeah. Come do it with me. I was hoping, I, honestly, I was so shy. Yeah, no, it's gonna be. It'll be great. <laughs> yeah, look. Yeah, you did this. You did this. All right, here we go. So. And that's and and it's apparently you do that for um thirty <laughs> seconds and you get this apparently testosterone boost. Everyone gets it, and you feel good. But then I was like, I just feel good now but doing a show, playing shows. I know it's going to be great, so I I don't need to do, I don't really do anything apart from just be like, let's have a great show, guys. Just being you, just be me, man. You yeah, know? exactly. So what's next for you? What have we got coming up? Um, well, I'm just touring, finishing this Australian tour, touring for the rest of the year, and. I mean, I guess promoting this album all around the world, which is, is really fun. And at the same time, trying to think of new ideas and new songs to stay really far ahead. Mm-hmm. So, you know, when I get to the next point, I want to have everything ready really quickly. I want to have it all kind of lined up so I don't have the pressure, you know what I mean, of, you know, have you got the next song? You know what I mean? Because I've got a bunch already I'm working on. Um, and I don't, I don't want to have that pressure because that, that would freak me out too much. So, yeah, just all this stuff at the same time. Well, thank you so, so, so much for coming in, for power posing, for sharing your stories. I really appreciate it. And make sure you stream A Place We Knew. It's available everywhere. Everywhere. I'm talking everywhere. So do (laughs) it. All right? Thanks so much. Thanks for the chat. It's great. (laughs) Cheers.